So, for those of you who've been, like, on the ball with my content, uh, unlike some people I could mention, that being uh, a guy who's been consistently in my mentions for the past several hours telling me that I don't cover um, the U.S.'s support of global fascists enough um, and that the only uh, way I support, like, talk about this support is with the Azov Battalion, which y'all know is fucking bullshit. Y'all know I don't fucking limit myself to Azov. I talk about Galen. I talk about you know, the early NATO generals and the Bundeswehr. I talk about the, you know, support of far-right uh, people in the form of Pinochet and, you know, the Contras and the fucking um, Mujahideen and Taliban and all these groups. But, you know, that's not good enough for some people. So maybe someday I'll uh, go over what that thread was about. But... See, the, the, the real shit is that we live under fascism. It's just fascism. It's not anything other than fucking fascism. Because it doesn't care about who suffers off its new financial regime they're trying to push. They don't fucking care. They don't give a fuck. They have no reason to. Um, and so I saw this article today. And I think it typifies sort of a point that I've been bringing up for a while. Um, and for those of you who have been following my content for a while, you know that one of the things that I think is going to happen is they're going to offer people Fed coins, as they're colloquially called, or CBDC, um, in exchange for their fealty uh, to the new CBD system, uh, CBDC system. And... By fealty, I mean that they might not like the fact that, like, the greatest wealth transfer in history just happened. They might not like the fact that their savings are gone. They might not like the fact that their small businesses were shut down or that they were jailed for not meeting certain restrictions or that they were, you know, targeted by social media for censorship because they dared question anything at all or that their family and friends were turned against them by a media which constantly sided with a corrupt government, etc. Um, you know, it's almost like the education system, the media, the uh, politicians, the corporations, the culture itself, and the churches were all supposed to be in lockstep and serving the state. sort of like a corporativist kind of kind of arrangement, you know? It sounds an awful lot like the kinds of things that were said in the, you know, book, well, a pamphlet, really. The book, uh, The Doctrine of Fascism by Jean Tile, later uh, adapted by uh, Mussolini. You know, the original definition of fascism is what we're, what we're experiencing right the fuck now. And there might be some people who are a little bit upset about that. And, like, maybe just understandably, maybe I'm one of the people who's been banging the drum on this for a long time. Um, and, you know, saying that maybe that's why the U.S. had no problem working with a long, fucking wide array of fascists, um, including Nazis, uh, which they seem to really love. It's always great to say, like, oh, yeah, you know, I, hey, your built Ford tough truck, your Murrican Ford, your, your Detroit Henry Ford Ford, he used to make war materials for Nazis. You're not allowed to bring that up. Because <laughs> it's bad. It's bad to remind people that one of the reasons that the people who are rich right now got and kept their wealth is because of transfers from, you know, the working class to other rich people and then to the Nazis themselves. You know, it's, it's, it's not like supporting Nazis is some sort of, like, growth industry that's been a consistent thing since Nazis were a thing. 
And it's not like it, you know, translates into a pattern for, you know, a really long time in history that the uh, people who don't speak out about it are part of the problem. And the people who do speak out about it, although they are persecuted, um, eventually get vindicated and learned from historically, especially as a sort of, you know, cautionary tale about hey, I didn't say shit because I wasn't a shit. So now I'm in the shit. You know, maybe it's a fucking problem that should constantly get brought up. Uh, constantly get brought up because it's constantly a problem. Just maybe. Maybe? Can we do that? No, we can't. We can't bring anything up more than exactly once and ideally zero times because that's what this person wants. Anyway, now that I'm done venting, um, those of you who have been following know that I think they're going to give people those attaboys in the form of like a UBI or a one-time, two-time stimulus, something like that, to get them to be like, hey, yeah, yeah, you know, all these mega corporations, which are the primary businesses to have stuck around uh, after the restrictions, uh, and after the massive transfer of wealth, uh, you know, maybe these ones will have sales that say if you use your CBDC and your AI facial recognition and palm recognition things, if you use those, we'll give you a discount. You can get cheap goods. And then eventually when these things come into more circulation, because people can get a discount or something, or they're the only thing that's even usable there. Like, you know, certain businesses are going cashless and shit. Maybe that will muscle out the people who can't hack it. And either they will be destitute and absolutely fucked when the system does change, or they will have to assimilate. And, and just to hammer that home... Here's a nice recent article about that very fucking situation posted very fucking today. And this is it. Now, I want you to think of this. Every time you see Brits or anything like it, I want you to think millions of people like you. Because it's coming. If they're going to do this in fucking Britain, they're going to do it fucking everywhere. It's coming. Get fucking ready. Millions of people like you would struggle in cashless society favored by wealthy. Uh, this is from the counter signal. More than 10 million people like you would struggle to live in a cashless society that's favored by the economically secure, found a new report. Uh, <laughs> As well, forcing people onto a digital currency could lead to a loss of control over finances and spiraling debts, warns a study from the Royal Society of Arts, RSA, commissioned by ATM Network Link. For millions of people, their relationship with cash is critical to the way they manage their weekly budget, said report author Mark Hall. Despite online banking and shopping becoming more common, he added, our research shows the percentage of the population wholly reliant on cash is unchanged. According to Sky News, the study found that a completely cashless society could lead to increased isolation and reduced human connection. R remember, y'all, remember, just remember when I said that this contact-free thing, this whole contact-free existence is designed to alienate people from each other and that the point of the lockdowns is to alienate people from each other, get them reliant on AI so that their brains are being programmed by the state and its corporate allies on a consistent basis, and that this sort of contact-free kind of thing was going to lead to the mark of the beast, literally hand on a thing or, you know, and just just remember, it's, it's, it's this or it's this it's not this you know this 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 angle you can't it's not that one you know it's not Sieg Heiling just because it's 
you know, it's Amazon. It's friendly. Amazon is perfect and pure and ethically driven snow. So anyway, the point is that this is part of the point of all of this is to alienate people from each other, fuck up their shit and force them onto the new program after. It's program reaction solution model. It's MK Ultra model. It's saying, hey, we found out trauma is an effective way to control people. It's like I've been saying, it's nothing but trauma bonding. That's what they're doing. They're, they're fucking you up. And then handing you the means to be exactly a little bit less fucked up for a bit. Maybe we shouldn't be on a system that does that to people. Hmm? Anyway, back to the post. Um, those enthusiastic about a digital currency are the economically secure, uh, this study revealed. Of respondents favoring a cashless society, 85% ranked themselves as having high or medium economic security. By the way, I don't feel free to uh, use the links in the description to support by a donation of one time or Patreon or Kofi or something like that. I will greatly appreciate it. Um, <laughs> of the millions that would struggle in a cashless society, many are the elderly and vulnerable, Express reports. John Howells, chief executive at the UK's uh, Cash Point Network Link warned that around 5 million people are at risk of being left behind unless something is done to help the transition to digital. Unless something is done to help the transition to digital. Unless something is done to help the transition to digital. I wonder what they're going to do. The thing that I've been saying they're going to do the evil and horrible thing that I've been saying they're going to do? Golly gosh darn, couldn't be. Shucks. Anyway. the This infrastructure will start to fall apart. Actually, let me, let me try it, British. This infrastructure will start to fall apart unless something is done. And we are already seeing ATMs and branches closing at a worrying rate. Our cash infrastructure is experiencing death by a thousand cuts... We have five to ten years to fix digital payments before cash becomes unworkable and need to start planning how to get the new system working for all, Howell said, according to Express. No, you don't. 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 You don't need to do that. You don't need to make it work for everybody. You don't need a transition period. You don't need a cashless society. You want it because it's going to make it easier to control people and eat faster to profit that's it that's all that's it that's all that's all it is it's fascism but with a smile it's what consolidated would call friendly fascism actually you know you'll learn to like what you must do if you resist you are the threat you are told who to fight and win Can, can And maybe like the, the next lyric, you know, alienating technology wipes out our sense of community. Millions will die just like before we disconnect and start the war. We make life a commodity. We turn animals into machines. <laughs> I've listened to that song too many times. Anyway, point is... Um... Powell said the use of cash has fallen 40% since COVID and is still falling. Two years ago, he warned that cash could be finished in two years. Critics say cashless society will lead to a surveillance state. <laughs> oh man, I'm a critic. Last month, there was widespread calls to boycott Starbucks after one store in the UK posted a sign saying it would go cashless. 
Coffee lovers wondered if all the stores would go cashless, but Starbucks responded by saying this is not the case, and the change is limited to individual stores and their licensees. Meanwhile, Canada's Chartered Professional Accountants, CPA, has begun educating kids as young as 10 on managing money in a cashless society. It's like that video I posted uh, about the AI facial recognition shit. You know, the fucking thing that they that they muscled through by saying this is going to detect whether or not passers-by have fevers and COVID, but can also detect fucking everything else about them. It's not about fevers. It's not about COVID. It never fucking was. It's about a new tyrannical surveillance state forcing everybody onto the program. And if you can't get there, get fucked. That's what it is. And when I read articles like this, it's not even bittersweet. I just paste on a sarcastic smile so that I can not fucking cry on camera. That'd be good. Because this is evil. And it's the norm now. The new normal is evil. And anybody who insists otherwise is fucking evil too. Anybody who supports the mainstream media after their lies, anybody who supports Dr. Science, Mr. Science, anybody who supports anybody involved in this transition period, you know, it's funny. It's funny. Transition periods just really lead to really bad things a lot. It's almost like Bakunin was right. It's almost like a lot of the anarchists who've been warning people about this sort of thing have been right. It's almost like you didn't need the past three years in order to tell that people were right. But then people like me were consistently told that we were insane and need to be shut down and had our shit reported and we're consistently told we're not right golly gosh darn it's almost like the system is rigged you know ah oh, fudge it could be that the same system which time magazine admitted colluded for all those um you know government and corporate etc cetera, etc cetera, to you know control the narrative on trump could be controlling the narrative on other things Fuck, sorry, shit, god damn it, I can't say this. This is very dangerous to our democracy. This is very dangerous to our democracy. This is very dangerous to our democracy. But I'm going to keep on fucking saying it because somebody needs to. And yeah, there are other people saying some stuff like this, but you know what? There needs to be as many voices as possible. Your voice. In your family's house. In your churches. In your neighborhoods. In your communities. In your place of business. Every fucking where needs to be aware of this evil system. Because otherwise, there's going to be a lot of people dead and left behind because they were not economically secure enough to fucking live. And they weren't willing to do everything the state said and get on their surveillance grid in order to fucking live. They weren't willing to acquiesce to the fascists, so they were loaded onto the metaphorical and occasionally physical train car. It's like Megadeth said, without an RFID chip, you're just an illegal alien and an enemy combatant of America. Welcome to New World Order. This is the end of the line. This is the end game. And they don't give a fuck about you. 
And that's why you need to smash the fucking state.